Hello everyone. So in this particular video, I will be explaining you in brief and all the higher things that you really need to know in classification of fatty acids. So let's classify fatty acids. Now the fatty acids, they are basically hydrocarbon chains. As I have written here, a fatty acid has got carboxyl group here on the left side. And then we have a hydrocarbon chain as you can see CH2, 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 CH2 and then there is a methyl group on the, all the way on the right side there. Okay. So basically we have one carboxyl group in a fatty acid and one methyl group in a fatty acid and in between you have a hydrocarbon chain. Depending on the number of these carbons present in a fatty acid we can classify fatty acid there so I am going to come to that point little later. Now majority of time fatty acid is written something like this. So this is the carboxyl group and every bend that you see here that will represent a carbon atom and it ends as methyl group there. Okay. Now the first classification of fatty acid is based on the number of carbon uh, double bonds that are present in a fatty acid. If a fatty acid do not have any double bond, we just call that as a saturated fatty acid. So as I have written here, so there is no double bond in a fatty acid. Basically you can consider that as a saturated fatty acid. If there is a double bond in a fatty acid, so that can be called as unsaturated fatty acid. Double bond present in unsaturated fatty acid can be of cis configuration. It can be of trans configuration. The trans fatty acids they have got uh, a straight chain after the double bond and as you can see cis configuration fatty acids uh, after the double bond you can note that there is change in the direction of the tail of that particular fatty acid and this change in the direction of the tail is the one that contributes to membrane fluidity. The trans fatty acid although they have a double bond so they are they are considered to be harmful to our body because they will they are positively correlated with atherosclerosis and cardiovascular events and that's because the tail is straight they act like a saturated fatty acid so when they become part of our membrane so the membrane fluidity it decreases so when the membrane fluidity decreases so the rigidity of membrane increases and that can be uh, it's not a good for it is not good thing for our membrane to have a dynamic function Unsaturated fatty acids, they can be further classified into monounsaturated fatty acid and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Now in monounsaturated fatty acid, as the name says, there will be one double bond present in that particular fatty acid. Whereas in polyunsaturated fatty acid, there can be more than one double bond that is present. So that is what is referred as polyunsaturated fatty acid. Before we further classify polyunsaturated fatty acid, let me give you an example for monounsaturated fatty acid. Now the monounsaturated fatty acid, one of the most common example is oleic acid. Now the oleic acid is an 18 carbon fatty acid, it has got one double bond and that is at 9th carbon atom between 9th and 10th carbon that is monounsaturated fatty acid. Now some of the oils that contain high concentration of monounsaturated fatty acid and that is olive oil. So olive oil is rich in monounsaturated fatty acid and the most common monounsaturated fatty acid present in olive oil it is a lean of oleic acid. Canola oil has got monounsaturated fatty acid, peanut oil has monounsaturated fatty acid, sesame oil has monounsaturated fatty acid. Now coming to the polyunsaturated fatty acid. Polyunsaturated fatty acid furthermore we can classify these fatty acids into omega family of fatty acids. Now the polyunsaturated fatty acids they can be classified into omega family of fatty acids and omega family of fatty so before we get into omega family of fatty acids so let me first explain you how to number a fatty acid carbon how to number a carbon in a fatty acid 
So here is the carboxyl group and here is the methyl end all the way towards the 18th carbon there. Now the carboxyl carbon is number 1 carbon and then number 2, number 3, number 4 and you can go on naming, uh, means numbering these carbons all the way to 18. All the blue colored numbers that you are seeing here, that is the classic way of numbering a fatty acid. Now, there is another way to now uh, name these num uh, carbons here. So the after the first carbon, now the second carbon can be called as alpha carbon and the third carbon is a beta carbon and the fourth carbon here in a fatty acid is the gamma carbon. So this is alpha, beta, gamma numbering of a fatty acid. Now there is another way to number a fatty acid and that is starting from the methyl end all the way from here methyl end. So the methyl carbon, methyl end carbon is the first carbon there that is omega 1 carbon. This is the omega system of numbering. Omega 1 is the methyl end carbon then the omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, 5 you can go on uh, numbering it like that. All the red color number you are seeing here those are the omega numbering. With this particular background, so let's move on to see how to classify a fatty acid into omega system of fatty acid. Now let's move on to see omega series of fatty, omega 6 series of fatty acid and the example for that is uh, linoleic acid. As you can see linoleic acid is written as 18 and that's a total number of carbons present in a linoleic acid and 2 indicates here is the number of double bonds and the double bonds are, are, pre are present at 9th carbon and the 12th carbon starting from the carboxyl side. Okay, uh, Sometimes we write it as 18, 2 and 9, 12. 9, 12 indicates that is the position of double bonds. Now how to uh, know that we, this particular fatty acid belongs to which omega series. So now the omega series of numbering it is that first very first double bond that is in respect to omega carbon whichever the first double bond you see there with respect to the now omega carbon that is the omega series of fatty acid here is your methyl end and that's the omega 1 carbon that is like this here omega first first omega 1 so the omega 1 here and then omega 2 omega 3 omega 4 omega 5 and omega 6 and in the omega 6 carbon you see the double bond so it means the first carbon it appears at the sixth omega carbon there and that is why this particular fatty acid is it belongs to omega 6 series of fatty acid. So the linoleic acid as it is written here this is a omega 6 family of fatty acid. Now we have a omega 3 series of fatty acids. Omega 3 series of fatty acid example is alpha linolenic acid. Now see this particular fatty acid here that is given. So here is the omega carbon. It has total 18 carbon and it has three double bonds starting from the carboxyl side. One is at 9th carbon, 12th carbon and 15th carbon. But we are interested in omega series of classification. So you really need to figure out in relation to the omega carbon where is your first double bond. Now here is the omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. So it is present at the number omega 3 carbon. It has a double bond. That is why this belongs to omega 3 series of fatty acid. Now the easy thing to uh, figure out how, how to, how to uh, know that a fatty acid belongs to omega uh, 6 or omega 3. All you got to know is how many number of carbons are there in that particular fatty acid. Take that number and see which is where is the last double bond that is present in that fatty acid starting from the carboxyl side as you can see in this particular fatty acid starting from the carboxyl side last double bond is present at 15th carbon and the total number of carbons in this fatty acid is 18 so all you need to do is subtract 15 from 18 so 18 minus 15 equals 3 and that means it is omega 3 series of fatty acid Let's do that for this omega-6 linoleic acid. Linoleic acid has 18 carbon again and the last double bond is present at 12th carbon. So 18 minus 12 you get 6 and that is omega-6. You can do this for any number of unsaturated fatty acid and you can easily classify that fatty acid into either omega-3, omega-6 or omega-9 series of fatty acid. Now let's classify further our fatty acids based on the number of carbons present in the fatty acid. 
The fatty acids can be classified based on the number of carbons as short chain fatty acids where which have got double uh, means uh, number of carbons in a short chain fatty acid will be less than 6 carbons. Example for that we have acetate which has 2 carbon, we have propionate which has 3 carbon and butyrate which has 4 carbon. Now these short chain fatty acids they play an important role in uh, regulation of our metabolic pathways and majority of time we get this short chain fatty acid by the bacterial flora that is there in our intestine that is and they get it from fiber content that is there in our food so that is why it is important for us to consume fiber in the diet because we can synthesize short chain fatty acid and which will regulate our metabolism for good now medium chain fatty acids medium chain fatty acids they are con they contain number of carbons between 6 and 12 so any fatty acid that have got 6 carbon to 12 carbon you can classify them into medium chain fatty acid and the example for that is we have capric acid caprolic acid we have a uh, lauric acid which is a 12 carbon fatty acid which is rich in coconut oil Note that lauric acid is a saturated fatty acid but, but it's a medium chain fatty acid that is why the short and medium chain fatty acid they are absorbed directly into portal system and they will reach liver and they will be metabolized in the liver. So that is why coconut oil is considered to be good for us because they, it can be burnt into and, uh, calories basically because it is directly getting into portal system. Coming with the long chain fatty acid, in long chain fatty acids will have carbon more than 12 and less than 22. Any fatty acid which has got more than 12 carbon and less than 22 carbon, we can classify them into long chain fatty acid. An example for that is the most common long chain fatty acid that we synthesize is palmitic acid and that is 16 carbon and then we have stearic acid which has 18 carbon. Now the very long chain fatty acids they contain carbons more uh, 22 or more. So any fatty acid that has 22 carbon or more than 22 carbon we classify them into very long chain fatty acid example narvonic acid. Majority of time very long chain fatty acids they are present in the neuronal tissues and they need to be oxidized in the uh, peroxisomes. So that's about classification of fatty acids based on the number of carbons. Then we have one more classification and that is classification based on the nutritional requirement. So we have essential fatty acids and non-essential fatty acids. So the essential fatty acids need to be essential component of our diet and there are two essential fatty acids that you got to remember one is the linoleic acid and the other is linolenic acid alpha linolenic acid. Now the essential fatty acid linoleic acid in our body it will be converted into arachidonic acid and this arachidonic acid when it becomes part of our membrane so uh, especially when there is inflammation is needed so arachidonic acid is released from the membrane by phospholipase A2 and then that gets into lipoxygenase pathway and cyclooxygenase pathway to produce lycotrienes, lipoxins and prostaglandins. These molecules are pro-inflammatory so they participate in inflammatory process. Now alpha linolenic acid it is omega-3 family of fatty acid and in our body when we take the take it in our diet so in, in the body it is converted into eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. These two omega-3 family of fatty acids they are incorporated into our membrane and during inflammatory process they will be broken down and they get into lipoxygenase pathway producing 
uh, leukotrienes, lipoxins, mericins, resolvins, all these kind of inflammatory mediators. So basically, they, uh, they no, alpha linolenic acid derived uh, inflammatory mediators, they are cytoprotectants, they are anti inflammatory, and they are uh, uh, pro resolving molecules. So, it is absolutely essential for us to maintain a good concentration of linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid in our diet. Recommended uh, intake is uh, 10 is to 1. For every 10 linoleic acid, we need to have 1 alpha linolenic acid. Uh, that's the recommended um, ratio. But uh, pragmatically, 4 is to 1 is good and ideally 1 is to 1 is good. Means for every linoleic acid, 1 alpha linolenic acid is good, but it is difficult to achieve a 1 is to 1 ratio, especially because alpha linolenic acid is not sufficiently available in the kind of oils that we use but maintaining that is an ideal thing otherwise recommended is 10 is to 1 non-essential fatty acid as it is written here so you don't need to take them in our diet so because we can synthesize palmitic acid and stearic acid in our body Let's classify uh, lipids in our body. So the lipids can be simply classified into storage lipids and membrane lipids. Storage lipid, most important one is triacylglycerol. Membrane lipid, we can further classify that into phospholipids and glycolipids. Phospholipids can be further classified into glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. So here is the structure of glycerophospholipid as you can see. It has got a glycerol backbone, a fatty acid is attached to the first carbon, another fatty acid attached to the second carbon and the third carbon has got phosphate attached and that phosphate will have a functional group. So that's how the glycerophospholipid is seen and the most abundant glycerophospholipid in our membrane is the lecithin and lecithin is one of the important component of our cell membrane and it is important for us to um, have good amount of lecithin because lecithin is it involves in methylation reaction and it is involved in acetylcholine synthesis. Now lecithin derivative, one of the lecithin derivative is a dipomethyl phosphatidylcholine. This dipomethyl phosphatidylcholine it becomes part of means it is one of the important component of surfactant and the surfactant it maintains surface tension of our alveoli. Here is the structure of spingo uh, lipid. So the spingosin is uh, backbone here. So number one, two, three carbon, and this is the spingosin backbone. Second carbon has got attached to the fatty acid. In the first carbon, there is a functional group. So the first carbon, if it is attached with a phosphate here, and then a functional group, that can be spingophospholipid. So these are the structures for glycerophospholipids and spingophospholipid. I hope this video has helped you in understanding classification of lipids in a simple and easy way. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in my next video.